Uh, hey, what's up, Be Stellar Crew? How you all doing? Another Wednesday, another episode, another podcast. We have a guest today. Okay, David couldn't make it, so I'm going to be doing it by myself. Our guest today is Jennifer Jason, and she is real estate, Missouri real estate group. Yes, Missouri real estate group. That is her... Um, that is a real estate agency. That's who she works for, for you and your mom, correct? Yes. So it's my mom and I in the office, and then my aunt is in the process of getting her license now. So we're going to have three licensed agents in our office. Okay. That's fantastic. Okay. So uh, me and Jennifer met about a year ago. Oh, I think it's been longer than that. Um, maybe. You know what? Yeah, I think it's been about maybe. two years. Yeah. Because it was right after you guys moved out here, and then I met you guys through sports. Um, yes, our daughters do gymnastics at the same place. Yes. And you were my daughter's coach. I was your daughter's coach. Okay, is yeah. she any good? Yeah, she's pretty amazing. Okay, good. Thank yeah. you. I was just making sure. I'm a little biased when it comes to uh, your daughter. Oh, yeah? Her. Oh, okay, good, good. She's That's a fantastic. Doll. That's great. Okay, so today we're going to kind of interview Jen for a little bit. We're going to figure out why she went the real estate route because it's not a steady pay job. Mm -mm. It is not one of those things that you just go through nine to five and every week the paycheck is going to come, right? You got to work hard there's a lot of appointments that don't turn out the way you want them to a lot of cancellations a lot of all of this so uh that's kind of like an entrepreneurial mindset that's what we try to uh inspire our listeners to go into to go into the uncertainty to go into the uh the portion of work where the rewards are a lot bigger but there's a lot more risk right so why did you choose that instead of getting a regular job Give us a little bit of a background. So a little bit of background on me. Um, I used to work at O'Reilly Auto Parts. I worked the at the time I was working in 6 to, I think, 3 o'clock just so I could be home for my kids. And it kind of got to the point, like, I don't, it can only go so far. You know, whenever you're working for a corporate company, you only have so much that you can progress. And then what's after that? I mean, and I just kind of wanted to be a little bit more of a mom. You know, I if I needed my kids to have a doctor's appointment, I had to schedule that with work and I had to make sure I had to like play ping pong back and forth of okay is this time gonna work can you guys have this covered whatever I was more worried about my kids you know so I I've always been interested in real estate even when I lived out in California my mom's been a real estate agent since 2017 very successful in California and I was gonna get my license out there, but I decided, you know, after watching what she was going through in California, I'm like, oh, uh, you know. So why happened in California? It's just there's a lot of different disclosures. It just kind of got a little overwhelming when I was trying to get my license. I was looking at the paperwork, like, yeah, I don't know if I could, I don't know if I could deal with this. You know, there's so many different laws, and there's a lot that comes along with California. Um, but not, whenever I moved out here, my husband and I bought a house, our first house. We moved out here and decided within six months we were going to buy a house of living here, and we made it happen. And I remember going through the process. I had an amazing agent at the time. Um, his name is Alan Hall. He was the broker where my mom was working at. My mom was the agent, but he was the broker. But since she was in California, he just kind of took over the file. And there was just a couple things with it. Whenever you're buying a house, it's the big, one of the biggest decisions that you make in your life, one of the biggest financial decisions. And you want to make sure that you're in contact with these clients and he was amazing he did everything right but i kind of wanted to do something different i wanted to make sure that there was no holes in the transaction i want to make sure that whenever these people are coming to me asking me for you know hey i want to buy a house i want to make sure that they are in, i'm in contact with them constantly i don't want to have to have them call me and say hey how's everything going i want to make sure that they have the understanding maybe a weekly phone call every few days hey you know just so you know this is what's going on customer know? service to yeah. keep them up on the on the process and everything absolutely and then because it's really scary whenever you're in the biggest financial decision of your life you know i want to make sure that people feel comfortable and they know what they're doing so i decided after working at o'reilly's for so long you know and I kind of got burnt out there that I was ready to take a ne the next step in my life. I was ready to move on to something new, and I decided to jump into real estate. And I went to school, got my license, and jumped into it. Nice. So how do you like it so far? I love real estate. It It's kind of one of those things, like, there's so many things that are changing. Everything's changing so fast, and it's like you have to stay on top of things all the time. But you work with some amazing people. You get to know some the networking in real estate, the title companies, the lenders. Whenever you start meeting all those people, it's very rewarding. That's good. That's good. So you 
you said something that really struck me. You said you, you had to kind of juggle time between work and going to pick up your kids and all that stuff. So you went into real estate, even though it's an unsecure position, like there's no steady salary or anything like that, but you chose that so you can have more time with your kids. You can kind of take control of your time. Tell me a little bit about that. So I have two kids. I have two daughters. I have a 13 year old and a seven year old. And I wanted them to be in sports. My, my oldest has always been a gymnast. Even when we lived out in California, she was always into gymnastics and living, moving out here and working for a corporate company. I couldn't say, Hey, I need to be off at this time so I can take my kids to a sport. It was, you know, you, you don't have that opportunity. You know, if she needed to be at gymnastics at four o'clock, I can't leave work early to take her on certain days. And it's kind of, I like to be able to be in control of my own time. You know, my kids are number one. I want to be able to, if they needed something, be able to provide that for them and not have to leave work because they forgot an assignment at home. My daughter can call me and say, hey, mom, I forgot this at home. And I don't have to worry about calling work and saying, hey, I got to do this. You know, I like being able to be in control of what I do all the time. And it is a very unsecure job. You know, you are still working off commission, but it's very rewarding in the long run. So that's what I always tell people. You know, we recruit in my business mm -hmm. um, in insurance and in finances. We always recruit and people are like, but I get $18 an hour. Like, how do I step into an unsecure job? And I'm like, okay, so what would you, would you if I gave you a lot of commission, um, a lot of money in commission, would you deny it? Mm -hmm. Would you not want to take it? Would you say, no, I'm okay, I'll take my $18 an hour? You know, I always tell people, like, you gotta, you gotta juggle things, right? You gotta kind of see what works for you. You free up your time. Maybe you go on like 10 appointments. Maybe you sell only one, but that one will bring you more money than working, you know, three months at 40 hour weeks, mm -hmm. right? So that's, that's kind of what people kind of miss about it. So it's, it's unsecure and it's unstable, just like any other commission, uh, business, job, anything out there. Um, so, I, and I understand you value your time with your kids and all that. But what do you say to people out there that are kind of trying to make their decision going from, let's say, let's say somebody wants to go into real estate, but they have a full-time job. So what would you tell them about that transition, like how, how to go about it? Yeah, see, that's really hard, especially if you're a one-income household. Um, even a two-income household, it's really hard nowadays. It's it's not very common that you see a stay-at-home mom. There are, most of the time, both parents have to work. So you have to kind of be ready and you have to, my advice would be go and network before you start doing it. Get to know people. Let people know before you even have your license. Hey, this is what I'm doing. I'm in the process of getting my license. Um, do you know of anybody that would, you know, in the future, in a few months, if you know of anybody that's talking about real estate, please let me know. I'd love to help them. I'm going to jump in right in. There's some people that take it slow. I took it slow at first because it was, I had a couple other things going on. Um, so I took it kind of slow and kind of tickle my feet in it a little bit. And then I, I now I've jumped in full time as of August or yes, August, but it's really hard to jump into something. You have to have the right mindset. You have to be able to be ready for it. You have to maybe put some money aside. Oh, you know, the golden rule is at least three months worth of income because it's going to maybe take three months to a year to get that income in real estate because you don't know what's going to happen and the market can change rapidly. People can change their minds. Transactions can fall apart the day of the day of closing. You never know what's going to happen. So it would be plan for it. Jump right in and make sure you just kind of broadcast it. Let everybody know, hey, I'm getting into real estate. So start it part time. maybe. Start it part time if you want or you can go full time. It just kind of depends on what you're able to do. I always tell people, um, if you have a job, cool, but you can't survive off of a job. And if you think you can, you're lying to yourself because the inflation is going up, everything's getting more expensive, uh, things are just going, getting out of control these days, especially. Um, so I always tell them, why don't you start something part time? Because like I always tell people, I take agents part time. Mm -hmm. Like if you want to work only one hour a day, cool, yeah. work one hour a day, try it out, try something. You will never know what's on the other side unless you try it. Right, and most people are scared to do anything. You know, everybody thinks 40 hour work week. Well, what about 80 hour work week? Mm -hmm. What about 60 hour? So what if you work 40 hours for your employer and then you start your business part time, let's say 20 hours a week? Try it. Mm -hmm. Would that hurt? Would it hurt to make extra thousand bucks a month, like two thousand bucks a month for the start? Even if you make zero first three months and then you land a commission that 
don't know, you sell like a half a million dollar house and you win like a twenty thousand dollar commission. Does it pay off? You know what I mean? It does I always, pay off. Yes. It definitely does, right? Because like those commissions that come, even if they come like once every two months at the beginning, how much money you make off of that commission, it kind of makes up makes up for your whole time that you'll be working anyways, right? But one thing about commission jobs, you constantly have to develop yourself. You constantly have to work, attract different type of client, higher client, better client, more valued client, right? Mm -hmm. So what are you doing that time where you're hearing all those no's and no's and no's. You're actually technically still working. In my opinion, you're gaining even more because you're, you're working on self-development. It's more than just a sale. you know. And then all that self-development compounds over time. And before you know it, now you're talking to clients that want to buy $2 million properties, $3 million properties. And that's what happens with your income. It raises with everything else. Same in the insurance world. Right at the beginning, you deal with these guys. They're like, "Oh, I can't afford fifty bucks a month. I can't afford twenty bucks a month." Right? And then you get to the point. You sit down in front of a client. And he's like, "Yeah, I can put two thousand a month away." And you're like, "That's the first time I've heard that." You know, like, you know, let's say the first time that happened to me was like maybe six months into the business. The first six months, it's like, "Oh, hundred bucks here, twenty bucks there, thirty bucks there." Commissions, all right. You know, a little bit here, a little bit there. And then all of a sudden, you sit down with somebody. It's like, "Yeah, I put away two thousand a month." You're like, like he kind of slaps you in the face. But there's people out there. You just got to self-develop to reach to them. Yeah, and I would say a lot of it has to do with building relationships. You networking. have to be able to network, build relationships, get to know the people that you're working with, and find, I'm part of a couple different networking groups, and what somebody actually told me was find the golden goose. Who's going to be your golden goose? Um, I still haven't found my golden goose, but, you know, somebody's out there. You have to be able to network, build those relationships, and being able to refer. I work a lot of off of referrals. I, you know, if you know somebody that's looking for real estate, that's a referral. You know, you need to give them my information. But as far as everything, I would say a lot of building those relationships, getting the one-on-one -on -one relationships with everyone. That's super important whenever you're looking at any type of commission job. It's always networking. That's that's like the main. It's it's the main that that's one of the things that I struggled with at the beginning. I was always like one of those like I don't want to deal with people, I don't want to talk to people. But for those of you guys out there that think that way, that's the wrong way to think because everything you ever wanted is on the other side of meeting somebody new. Mm -hmm. And that's what people don't understand. You know, yeah, you want to be to yourself, but if you do that and you want to succeed, those two never go hand in hand, right? Um, okay, so. I'm gonna post Jennifer's information in the chat, right, um, under the episode. So if you guys are moving out to the Midwest, mm -hmm. uh, Joplin, Southwest Missouri area, uh, let me see, Northeast, Ar Northeast Oklahoma, Northwest Arkansas, and Southeast Kansas, right? In this area, make sure you guys contact Jennifer. Like I said, I'm gonna put her information in there. And the reason I say that is because this is one of the fastest growing areas right now in the country, right? So Jennifer, that's a huge opportunity for real estate agents. It's a huge opportunity for other smaller businesses to move in because the area is getting packed, right? Yes. The real estate is going up, everything. So what do you, can you elaborate a little bit on that? Like, why is that happening? Um, what do you expect from the housing market to go up or down over the next, let's say, couple of years and stuff like that? Tell us a little bit about that. Um, I wish I could tell, I wish I could tell you. I don't have a ball in front of me that can kind of give me the magic answer to that because everything changes, changes so rapidly. There's things that happen in our economy, in our everyday lives. I mean, everything's changing. I, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, I, I was born and raised in California and the market out there went absolutely insane. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people that can't afford to live out there anymore, they're starting to move here. They're starting to try to find, you know, these little towns like Joplin or even Springfield, anywhere in this area to where they can actually start building a life here because it is still affordable here in the Midwest. It's affordable to buy a house. You can still have a job and be able to own a home or work at a corporate company and own a home. It may not be the best home that you could you know, build on, but you can still do it here. The wages are still here, but I mean, inflation happens. So it's going to get a little bit hard and a little bit tough, but there's so much growth in this area. I, it kind of makes me sad because I moved to this area to, to slow down and I see everybody. it kind of going faster and faster. There's things that's happening here. That's like, it's building. And I mean, it's, it's growth and oh, growth is always good. I just wish it was kind of slow down here a little bit, but at the same time, I'm happy it's happening. But well, there's it's good a as a real estate agent. I mean, you know, you're going to get 
more clients, more yes. people that are buying properties, building houses. You know, I see all these new neighborhoods popping up. It's just all crazy. All the time. They're it's everywhere. It's all over the place, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, even from Neosho to Arkansas and to Rogers area, Rogers is pretty big. But that little area and through there, you have Pineville, you have Knoll, and I think all of those communities are going to start kind of growing more and more because it's in between Joplin and Rogers, Arkansas, and I think there's a lot that's going to be happening all through there. It is the main highway right there. I drove that one a couple of times. I play golf down there sometimes. And it's, it really is beautiful. We know I do a little bit of solar too part time. Mm -hmm. So like a couple of times we went down there to knock on some doors. Actually, my first solar sale was in Rogers, Arkansas. Right. Nice. So, um, you know, I go down there, you know, maybe a couple of times a month, a few times a month. And I do see new buildings popping up, new little plazas, mm -hmm. right? New, new small businesses opening up. So that's all good for real estate. You know, as a real estate agent, it's really good. Okay, so so if if somebody's moving out here, what would you recommend to them to do? Let's say, um, right now I have a house. You've been to my house. Mm -hmm. I wish I rented when I got out here for maybe about six months to a year to kind of learn the area. So what would you recommend to people that are listening to this and they're trying to move out here? Would you recommend for them to buy right away or to come in, rent a little bit, and then kind of figure out where they want to live? It's whatever they can do. I mean, there's there's benefits in for each one. I mean, whenever we moved out here, my husband and I and our family, we it was kind of on a whim. And we moved out here within ten weeks. We decided, hey, we're leaving California. Smart. And then within ten weeks, we were here, and we stayed with a family member for about six months. And it was nice on my end to be able to get to know the area, know where I wanted to be. I mean, with kids, you kind of have to look at school districts, you know, what does the town have to offer for my children? You know, there's a lot of different things to consider. But if you wanted to buy, just jump in and buy a house, that's always a great option too. You know, with a lot of the technology that we have nowadays, it's, you may have a sight and seen home, but you also have, we, with our, with Missouri Real Estate Group, we offer Matterport Solutions, which is like a 3D virtual tour of a home. We do it for the homes that we have for sale. We won't go out and do that for a home that you're looking to buy. But we also have, you have so much technology now, it's kind of hard to say no. You know, I don't want to do a sight unseen. We've done, through Missouri Real Estate Group, we actually helped somebody that was in, on a ship in the middle of the sea. And he was a veteran, so he was looking wow. to buy here. His, his kid um, was born here. So it was a sight and see. He never even seen the house until after we closed on it. Never seen the home. And it worked out well, and he loved the house because we were able to do video chat through just normal video chat. Take videos and pictures and with inspections. You kind of already get to know the house a little bit more. But it's just kind of whatever people can do. I mean, if you want to come out here, just jump right into a house. That's that's amazing. But if you wanted to come out here and spend six months and get to know what area you want to be in, that's amazing too. It's whatever whatever anybody's comfortable with. Whatever works for people. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to school districts, you know, my kids go, you know, they get homeschooled, so they don't really go to school. I don't really know what a good school district is around here. So what would you tell to our listeners if they're trying to move out of here? Uh, what is one of the best school districts in the area? So that way, if you guys are listening, and you're thinking about moving to Joplin, New York Shore area, Southwest Missouri area, anywhere around here, uh, what would you say was like probably the best school, school district? You know, it's hard to say because I don't want to say this school district is terrible, but I'm, I would say... Well, they're all pretty good around They're all pretty good. Which, ones, which one kind of sticks out a little bit higher than the rest of them? I'm kind of biased because I live in Web City. So okay. the Web City school district for my kids have been amazing. Uh, amazing teachers, amazing programs that they have there. Um, I heard Carl Junction is really good. Carthage is really good. Um, Neo Show. It just so they're all pretty good. They're all pretty good. I mean, it, you just my advice is just talk to people that live here. Talk to the people that have been to these school districts because I've only been to one, so I'm a little bit biased on it. But somebody may have really good information about the Carl Junction school districts or the Carthage school districts. My advice would be get in touch with some people that have kids through sports, however you want to get in touch with them, and ask them, you know, how do you like the school district? Have you had any issues? Um, what do you think of their curricular? What What do you What do you think of them? And get an honest opinion from people that have actually been in these schools. Okay, awesome. Um, and then you mentioned earlier that you're part of a couple of networking groups, and I love networking groups. 
So can you talk a little bit about that? Like just tell us which networking groups they are, what kind of, of value do you get out of it? Because most people are scared from networking. Yes. Right. They don't want to do networking. So tell us a little bit like what which networking groups do you attend? Um and how they benefit you in your business. So that way, like our listeners out there, if, if they have a small business, they don't know where to start or how to begin or nothing like that, they know at least where to go, maybe meet some people and network a little bit. So Yeah, absolutely. I love helping people that are wanting to jump out into make, doing their own business because it is a really scary decision. It's a big decision, you know, you're, whenever you're jumping into a new business. But there is a networking group called B&I. Um, I'm, a, I'm a part of it. What does it stand for? Business Network International. Okay. No, no, I was going to go on. Because I attended I twice. I answer. Yes. I attended twice, mm-hmm. and, I, and I do want to join it as soon as I get a little bit of time because, like, I'm just, like, yeah. so slim. Okay, what would be, um, what, what do you like about BNI? So, BNI, it, it works out to where it's it's um, industry-specific. So, I'm the only, in my chapter, I'm the only real estate agent. There's one insurance agent. There's one lender. You can invite different people to the group but as far as for a referral service um it's like having other people represent your business because they know you on a personal level like you and i we know each other on a personal level so if you know somebody that's looking for an agent you're like hey i know somebody and that's the whole point of the and i is you get all of these similar business owners together in all different types of business and you get let them get to know each other so if i know somebody that's wanting to buy a car hey i know somebody that can help you you know, and if and it goes back and forth, we are referring business within each other. So you I really to, like that. I I love it too. The whole network of it is amazing. Just the way their core values are phenomenal, and it's very, it's very humbling whenever you're in a room and everybody is for you and your business, and you're for other people in their business, and you get to know their business somehow. What sets them apart on a personal level from another business? You kind of get to know a little bit more about them. And I, I love that part of it. Okay. Wow, that's fantastic. What about the, you said there's a couple of them. Which one's the other one? So there's a couple different um, ones. I'm not part of the other groups. I'm only kind of stuck with B&I. Um, I know there's a million cups, which you've been to that a few yeah, times. Yeah, I love that one. Um, I know there's different <laughs> chapter or chambers that you can join. I know the Neosho Chamber of Commerce is really good. Carl Junction Chamber of Commerce. Um, I'm, I'm not a member. part of those. Are you? Yeah, yeah that's right. You're Carl a Junction. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, that's what I love about these smaller communities. People actually uh, they care about each other mm-hmm. here. It's um, you know, I live in Vegas. Nobody cares, man. I live yeah. in California. Nobody cares. They will come. You know, you know, I sell T-shirts, right? I was in a T-shirt stand. Some lady comes and starts talking smack about my shirts, and I'm just like, I'm not. Like mm-hmm. I'm standing here, I'm not in your way, just go around. You yeah. know what I mean? Go around. But they're like so around here everybody's pretty much the community. Like the chambers actually do a really good job. Mm-hmm. I love they have all those like after hours meetings, whatever they call them, and and the free breakfast, you know, they they, they really put on a nice little show where you they can really actually do. go and network and meet other people, like minded people, business owners that they can help your business, you can help their business, right? You get involved in the communities, you know, and it's very important to get involved in the community because that's where you live, that's where you're building your business. It's good to always get a get a part, be a part of those chambers to be a part of that community and the community growth. Of course, you know, everybody moves to a big city for opportunity. Mm-hmm. I actually believe there's more opportunity here than there is in a big city. Because really like over here, it's like, it's more personal. It's more personal. It's more you. Like people don't buy your business here, they buy you. Mm-hmm. You know, I can advertise all I want on social media or whatever, all other places. But over here, they know me. And that's why I think something special about that, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, you know what else I like? I like golfing events. You ever been to a golfing event? <laughs> I have not. No, I've never golfed. You should start golf. You should start golfing. I will try it one day. <laughs> yeah, golfing is let me, awesome. Let me free up a little bit of my time before I decide to start golfing. <laughs> yeah, as a real estate agent, you should you should definitely start golfing. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so you said you moved from California to the Midwest. Yes. And I can pretty much guess why, right? <laughs> and you made a 10-day decision. That was pretty fast. In 10 weeks. It was 10 weeks. Oh, from 10 the, weeks. From the time we made a decision day. to the time we left. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, I think you, did you guys have a house over there? We were renting. Oh, okay. So it was easy for us. We had to sell our house in Vegas first. And then we had to align it from that one to this one. And then yes. to move here. It was it was, it was was pain in the ass. So, um, so why did you make that decision? And how come you chose this area specifically? Um, I, 
before I moved here, I probably wouldn't have chose this area because I didn't know anything about it. I have family that live here, and that was the whole thing. We were going to move away from there, and we were going to buy a house here because it was affordable to buy a house here. So it, there's a lot of things that kind of went into it, but I wouldn't have chose this place. I would have chose like Tennessee or somewhere like that sounds a lot better. And whenever I at least decide a Joplin, I'm like, okay, Joplin. Okay. What's cool about Joplin? Like you never hear about yeah. Joplin. The only thing that you hear is tornadoes. So I mean, it was a it was a strange decision, but it's probably one of the best ones that we've ever made. The growth here is the people alone. You go from somewhere like California where you know you go to wave at your neighbors and you kind of like they kind of like, oh, they're going to talk to me. And they kind of like turn away from you. The, the small town that I lived in, it wasn't quite like that. But you had a lot of people moving into the town that were from the Bay Area that were like that. You know, you, you didn't wave to your neighbors. You barely even said hi to your neighbors. Mm -hmm. And it's it was kind of a culture shock coming out here in a good way. It was. It was people waving at me on the side road. I'm like, how do I know this guy? Yeah. Like, I'm just driving, it's a little two-lane road, you know, and the guy's, like, you know, waving at me, and I'm like, what's this guy doing? Like, I just moved here. Who knows me here, you know? But that's kind of cool. Uh, that's really cool. I like that a lot. Okay, so going forward, when it comes to your business, what are you trying to accomplish? Um, what are the future goals? How big do you want to get? Are you recruiting new agents? Are you looking for new agents? Like, what is the, uh, what is the idea of real estate Missouri Group? Missouri, or Missouri real estate group. <laughs> I always mix it up. That's okay. Yeah. Um. So right now, our goal is just to get our get ourselves established in helping people. That's kind of the core values with us. We want to help people. We don't with Missouri real estate group. Our team. We don't care if you buy a house for thirty thousand and we only make a couple hundred dollars off the off your um, purchase, or you're selling your house for five hundred thousand or a million dollars. We still want to treat people the same no matter what. And just because you're buying a smaller property does not mean that we're not going to give you the A plus service that you deserve. And I think that's what is really going to put us to stand, make us stand apart from everyone else. Is it doesn't matter. We still fight for you, your client, and we make things personal in our office. It doesn't matter where you come from. It's personal. We treat you like family. Whether you're my friend or you're my family, my true family, it doesn't matter. You're still going to be treated the same. And that's okay. Kind of Where's your office located? You said Web City. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's right there in Madison Square. Okay. Yeah. All right, awesome. So if you guys need uh, real estate advice, look up Jennifer Jason. I have her on Facebook. If you guys follow me on Facebook, I'm going to put all of her contact information in there. Um, so, Jennifer, you know, thank you for coming on. Yeah, thank right. you for having me. Yeah, I'm excited that you, that we actually, you know, we've been talking about this for a couple of months now, and then yeah. finally we chose a day. So, so I really appreciate you being here. Uh, do you have anything for the end? Give them, give them your contact information, yeah. so pretty much website, so, all that stuff. Yeah, of course. My name is Jennifer Jason um, with Missouri Real Estate Group. Um, my cell number is 417-483-2978. You can contact me that way through text or you can give me a call, a phone call. If I don't answer, I will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, do you my, guys have a website? Yes, we do. It's mrghomesales.com. And okay. then it kind of goes off the MLS system here. So. You're only going to see things that are truly on the market, not things that are already pending or closed. Or it, it kind of goes straight off the MLS site. So yeah, how's the market now? Is it, there's a lot of houses for sale. It's always changing. There are. It's starting to pick up a little bit, but springtime, it's very normal that it picks up. So okay, awesome. Well, thank you guys very much. Thank you for listening to Be Stellar podcast. Don't forget to be stellar today. You can listen to us on all the podcast platforms out there. You can go on my website, alexandrastories.com. You can go on blackeagledesign.com. This podcast is sponsored by blackeagledesign.com. Love you guys. We'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.